Hi. Hey. Been wanting to get you in here for a long time. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. How are things? Amazing. Tell me about this new record. It's not out yet. Um, no. So uh, what are we going to get? Uh, can we pause for one moment? Yeah. What? Can I say everything? You can say all the things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the answer is yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I can say album title, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm dropping the project. Uh, it's coming out in May, and it's called Thirteenth Floor. Um, it's a 13 track EP. No, LP. Uh, full track, full track project, and uh, I'm extremely excited. Extremely excited to bring to an audience. Extremely excited to have people receive. You know, I guess what I've been building for the past two years. This has been a long time in the works. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Definitely. And is it hard to bide your time? Is it hard to wait? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, ha- I had the luxury of, of, or I have the luxury of being in the sorority. And so while I was building this, I was able to, I mean, I had to divide my, t- divide my time. And so I-, I had to focus on what the sorority was doing, which made it easier to kind of like slowly build what the Hawaii Mighty thing, the Hawaii Mighty train that I'm rolling out now. But uh, it's definitely been a long time, like just in between everything else. I've just been slowly making sure to put those pieces together. But I was lucky enough to still be creative through the sorority and still be able to perform, still kind of like, you know, better my skills and better my performance avenues and those assets uh, through performing with them uh, just to continue to, you know, kind of grow the musicality. Uh, but yeah, definitely been a minute for, for solo of I Mighty stuff. Are you um, strategic? Are you very strategic? I, I like to think I'm relatively strategic. <laughs> <laughs> this is this idea of not just getting something out right away, but this idea of actually learning, mm-hmm. actually taking time. That is a strangely foreign concept these days. Mm-hmm. Time taking. Mm-hmm. Everything is instant, up and gone. So what was that process like for you? At first, it was very difficult. Um, I understand, you know, the process of putting things out at the right time, but like sometimes, I've I've never really, you know, underwent a release where the right time was this long. Yeah. Uh, you know, having to wait that long. I know at first, like I've had talks with my team about thinking things need to come out sooner and thinking I'm gonna, you know, lose the attention span of those who care currently. But I realized on a bigger picture scale, you know, going through the process that the project can't, you know, you can't sacrifice the quality of something for, you know, the time frame with which it is going to be, you know, received because, you know, you have this depleted quality and it comes out at the optimal time and then it's not the optimal thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it was just kind of the, the balance of finding the right thing and then, you know, waiting for that right time. And yeah, it was, it was extremely difficult to have some of these, some of these songs and ideas, you know, started over a year ago. Um, it was difficult to have to kind of be patient with it. Right. Uh, but I got used to it within the, the first couple of months of knowing that that's kind of what things were going to be like. It's about respecting the process. There's something to be yeah. said about that, right? A hundred percent. So what's on the record? What are you saying? Um, I'm saying a lot. You know, I'm, I'm a young black female. So a lot of the narrative that, that the audience is going to get is from that of a young black female. But uh, a young black female, I grew up in Malton. And so I spent a lot of time in Brampton. So I know the neighborhood you come from. Yes. So there's, that's another thing you can add to that. Absolutely. And that's another part of it too. Um, it's definitely not, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a street project or, you know, a project that's, you know, trying to focus on like, I guess these woe is me circumstances. Uh, it's more just like, these are my circumstances. These are the average circumstances for the average minority female. Um, and this is what we go through. This is what we think when we go through our lives. This is what happens on a day to day in our heads. Like this is what, what people are going to receive. Like this is exactly what I go through my life feeling. And, you know, I, I, I work in, you know, being a musician, I work in a male dominant field. Even in my, my day job, I work in a male dominant field. And I've realized through like regular conversation, through showing people projects, how, um, I guess, unique my experience is mm-hmm. in North America and how, you know, I guess silenced this type of narrative is or maybe just like not exposed to the majority. And um, so I feel like just by tapping into kind of like what my experiences have been uh, for the last 26 years, um, it it opens up a different perspective that I think is extremely important and it and opens up the doors for a conversation that I have in my car with my friends all the time. 
but you just you don't see it on much music or you don't see it on you know yeah. on, on CP24 like these right. conversations they're starting to happen but you know I'm definitely like what are the things what do you what are the things you talk about uh for example like let's talk about the concept of uh what what does slavery represent like what 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 was that process and do, do you mean how does it connect to today's realities and institutionals and laws specifically and things? um but we think about slavery as this thing that happened 400 years ago that ended that we've now grown from the there are systems that we have in place that function exactly the same way that slavery functions it's economic slavery economic slavery um the jail system in itself and what it identifies. I don't want to go into so many specifics because I have a project that speaks on this very, mm -hmm. uh, very, you know, very specifically. And I would love the message to be received on a, you know, from a listening standpoint. Um, but that topic I think is, is huge. I mean, I, I, when I started doing research and, and recognizing, I mean, you, I've always realized it, but recognizing, I guess, how, <laughs> how our jail systems function mm -hmm. and how we have, you know, people that are criminals doing labor, for companies that they would never get hired for had they, if they were outside of this system. Just very interesting, compelling I things. I think even Starbucks. If you drink Starbucks in the States, there's prison labor involved in the making and the printing of things. And wow. the wage is low. The wage yeah. is low. It's criminal. Yeah. Right. I didn't know it specific to that company, but I mean, I, I, it, no company surprises me these days. Right. It's just something that we, is, you know, for every day, you know, walking down the street, like we as people, we either don't know or we don't care. Um, and even like, even if I bring this to the forefront, like it might be like, you know, four minutes on my lunch break at work and then, you know, you go back to life. Right. We don't care. You know, I, I think also, and I, I, I'm curious your opinion on this at best it's, they weren't exposed to it, but at worst it's a smugness that Canadians think the black experience is just wildly different than it would be for a person who is African-American living in Mississippi. And that is true. Mississippi is very different than it would mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. in Ontario, in parts of Ontario. Yes. But do you think there's some of that at play that people just think that it's Canada? We didn't have slavery per se. Absolutely. That's part of it. I've had, I've had people that I've gone to school with tell me that I haven't experienced racism, not realizing that I've experienced racism didn't in the get, very classes we share. Didn't you get like bricks through windows? Oh yeah. yeah. I got bricks through windows. I got, you know, like racist in the same like in the same schools whether it's comments it's been in college like i'm I, college was funny uh i went to college in london and that was funny like i think people don't recognize that even just kind of being reminded that the color of your skin is different like every five minutes in like you know regular hanging out right. you know settings was that white guilt you think or something else you know i don't really know what that i don't really know what that was i think uh it was the when i was in london Where'd you the, go? I went to Fanshawe College. Fanshawe, okay. Shout out Fanshawe College. I went to Music Industry Arts. Dope program. Um, but when I attended that course, I, I think more than anything, you know, white people were uncomfortable with my ability to be comforted around them. So the more comfortable that I got, the more they would point things out about me to remind me that I was different. That's interesting. Yeah. That like, sounds like a shitty group of friends. <laughs> they weren't real. They weren't friends. They were definitely acquaintances. But yeah, it, it was for that reason that I couldn't develop friendships with many of them. Some of them are, are my friends, but very few. I think we would truly be able to connect because, again, London, a lot of people that went to school in London are from different, you know, small, Stratford and Keswick, Ontario, so like really small areas where they probably didn't grow with a lot of black people. I don't necessarily blame you for not necessarily being, like, I, there were a lot of interesting racial things, you know, in that in that setting, even like, I had a, I, I was an RA, I was a resident advisor and I had one of the other resident advisors in the first three weeks, like we did this like, you know, breaking down segregation, you know, seminar type things. And we had all these shoe boxes and they had a word on it, black, white, gay, fat, thick, all these different words that people can use to, to break somebody down. And we would take a box with the word that affected us and speak on our experience. And one of the girls took the box that said black and she was white and she started crying and said that, cause I, I took the box that was black and I spoke about the experience of like one of the bus drivers not acknowledging my thank you. And it was within like the first two weeks. And I very, you know, I, I very much noticed this and it was, you know, I wasn't in London long. So I was like, Oh my God, this is the next two years. Uh, you know, <laughs> this sucks. And uh, yeah, she took that same box and she started crying and talking about how she didn't realize she was racist and she's homophobic. And, uh, like, and so this was like small town mentality you know, coming to like fruition, like seeing black people and people that identify with being homosexual and like the inability to like take the pen from me and touch my finger. Like right. it, it was wild. It's little stuff like that people don't think happens in Canada. And I've been told that it doesn't. And so this is just kind of like 
it, it, it does. And like, without pointing fingers at anybody, this is like, this is my experience. It's 13 songs on my experience. I mean, not all 13 songs yeah. speak about that. Yeah, yeah. There's many other topics I talk about, you know, just having fun, just vibing. I definitely talk about like loyalty, progression, self-representation, self-understanding. Um, I guess all of the things that I think are at the pinnacle of my brain right now are topics I kind of touched on. But race is definitely one of them. And I think even without me speaking on it, just by being a black female, dark skin, I have dreads, like people will naturally never forget that I'm a black female. It's that great line, which says your presence is political. And you, exactly. you can't run from that. Exactly. Not that you'd want to. Exactly. I suppose the only positive out of that is it, what we were just talking about is when I was in Humber College. Nice. We, not that Humber was any different. Then we never would have had that conversation with the boxes. Like that's not part of the generation before you. Right. So it's... And I guess that that, did you find that program, that that's that thing to be effective? The box thing? Uh, I did on one hand. Um, I was really not expecting <laughs> the response that we got. Um, I think having something like that in place, I mean, our job at the time was to be resident advisors. There's a bunch of different people coming from a bunch of different areas and you need to make sure that they're respecting each other, respecting the space. So that was what the the... The workshop was for us. It was so that we could understand like how other people function and what they go through so that when we deal with these residents, when they come into the school, we can navigate their personal, you know. Yep. Um, but. Uh, so there was benefits in that respect. In that regard, yes, I found that beneficial. But I found. Um, it's interesting. I found after that girl spoke on her experience, which you know, some may feel it's brave and some may feel it's not. I think it was just her personal experience. I, I, I'm not really sure what my opinion is on her speaking out other than that she, it was her truth in that moment. Um, but her truth turned into uh, a lot of white people trying to guilt me into making her feel better. And I thought that was hilarious. That's super fucking whack. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> like, and I re- like, like hilarious where it's not funny at all. Right. It was, I just remember like, I don't know what my reaction was to her saying what she'd said, but it was a silent reaction. I didn't, I didn't say anything out loud. I didn't speak to anyone about my opinion. I didn't know anybody. Like, yeah. I was in the, 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 that, that city for two weeks, so I didn't know anyone to speak on it. Um, but I just remember like several people coming up to me and saying, oh, well, so-and-so, I don't even remember her name anymore, but like yeah. so-and-so, you know, I think it was really brave of her to speak out and maybe you should, maybe you should go to her room. She's in such and such room and maybe you should. <laughs> I just remember feeling like, this is crazy that... I, there's somebody that is telling you that they've lived their life disrespecting or at least not truly respecting people that look like me. And you want me to go to her room and make her feel better? Really? It's, I just, that for me was like, we still have a long way to go. But at least there was, as you said, that initial workshop at all, just to kind of like recognize that other people have these experiences. Yeah, look, right? as we know, change is incremental, but that doesn't mean we get to, uh, we have to validate everybody's experience. You don't have to validate everybody. That, that's, a, that's a modern concept that, that's, I think, kind of bullshit. Yeah. You know, you, great, you had the experience. Thanks for sharing. That's on you, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be on you, obviously, to try. This is what I'm, why I'm excited about you. Why, when I first reached out to you on IG was I heard the things you were, I was just hearing you rhyme, and I was thinking there's, there's something in here that I really... I, I, I fucking like, but I respect. Dope. Awesome. Um, and I, that's why I sent you that note. It's like, come, please come in because I grew up, I'm old enough to remember when hip hop started. And so I want, I remember being in class when we got our first tapes and we were honestly eight, right. nine when it started for us. So I like it when artists, regardless of the genre, hip hop, punk, rock, I don't give a fuck. Right now, I want artists to be about something. And if, right. they're, not, if they're not about something, that's cool, but we don't have to treat them like they're about something. Right. There's a difference. That's, there's, yeah. yeah. And we can have both. There is room for both. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't hate Maroon 5. I don't give a shit. I don't think about Maroon 5. <laughs> I don't think about Maroon 5, but they're not you too. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And so I don't need to equate the two. It's the same in, 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 in hip hop. For, for me, I would say it's the exact same thing. And I think it's very important for me to speak my truth, which is my reality, which, you know, I think, I think is of importance. And I, I hope other people will receive it that way. Uh, my perspective is I go through life thinking these things and like, there's a whole, there's all 2.2% of, yeah. of Canada that, you know, can at least resonate in a very, like I've experienced this way. Um, and then there's a, like, I have, I have white allies 
who I talk to about these things as well. It's just, I feel like, you know, my Honda Civic needs a stage. Like there's too many conversations in my car with a blend <laughs> <laughs> where I think we have these monumental ideas. And, and, Did you say and, conversations in your car with a blunt? Yeah. Okay. You're, not, <laughs> not while you're driving? No, no, no. <laughs> No, while I'm driving. No, definitely not. This is this is Canada after how, all. How does, the, how does the blunt affect the conversations? Um, it usually. Sp- I am a. I don't think I'm radical. You don't. <laughs> I don't think I'm a radical person, but others might. Um, the blunt is to relax them, so in my space, <laughs> they can open up and truly. You know, I like to have like I like to have really deep conversations that at the end, like you and me, are still cool. Why don't we start uh, an, uh, an Instagram show where you're an Uber driver and I'll ride with you and anybody can get in the car, but you got to smoke them out first <laughs> and then see what the conversation is like. Because Be Real has his, but that's with his friends. We oh, should do it with word. strangers. That would be amazing. That would be so fun. Don't patent that. We, that's ours. That's also the most hilarious excuse I've ever heard. You smoke weed in the car so that your friends can be relaxed <laughs> they, they, sometimes i just i come on a little strong i guess and well I, I i don't know it's funny i i just speak my mind i speak my mind i'm very vocal i'm very forward i i i don't think that the things that i'm saying are rude like me myself i don't think the things that i say on an everyday basis are like rude or that i don't have a filter i don't find that right but i do find that even when i know exactly what i'm saying for other people it might be a lot they're like they're like okay i just where I work, I just want to wrap this this cable. Right. I'm not really trying to talk, right? But for me, I'm like, no, no, no. Like we've got five free minutes. Let's like let's 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 talk about something that matters. Like right. this really deep thing happened, or this political thing happened, or you know, th- this woman made this claim. Like, how do we feel? You know what I mean? Like just kind of like things that are not surface level. We talk about so much surface level stuff. You know, Maroon Five. How did they yeah. do the Super Bowl? Like let's let's talk about who fucking cares? You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Like the, those that stuff is cool too. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like you need diversity and yeah. you can't always just be on 100% and just oh, I'm ready to fight the system every yeah. day but I just think without you know without aspects of that in everyday life it's just like what is the what is the point well and also if and, and this is just my 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 observation about that having interviewed a lot of people in in this regard I just saw KRS one play show in LA oh. and it was an hour and a half of f- fucking school it was amazing Jeez. like it was amazing but I was I was Equating, because somebody was saying, we know it's it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, you know, what he was doing for the whole show. And then I thought, you know who's a lot is Migos in the shit they say and how homophobic and how fucking violent and how uninteresting they are, especially now that they're rich, right? Mm. Because they didn't didn't alter their worldview. They got money now. So when you have money now, you can't act like you don't have money anymore. You have money now. So all the people I know who say the shit that that I find morally reprehensible... They don't have a filter. So why should people who want to equate and why, why should people who want to make the world more just, why should they have a filter? Uh, yeah, that's a... Migos doesn't have a filter. Fuck that, right? And I've seen, I saw Migos play at Coachella and it was great, except when they started saying stuff. Right. And I was like, oh, I can't get behind this shit. Oh, shit. I can't get behind this shit. <laughs> when I was 22, I didn't, I was just like, oh, I can, I can separate. But now I can't be singing along and you're saying, I can't say that fucking word, so stop it. Right. Right? right. I, I just don't understand why the people who are trying to make things better have to play politely, but the enemies don't have to play, and they're enemies. <laughs> right, and it's, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know, we, we have this interesting structure, and I'm, I want to be a big part of the shift, where music that really does have something to say, that like comes from a certain position, is like seen as too much, or seen as preachy, or, I mean, like, when, when, when 13th Floor comes, because I'm, I'm very aware of, you know, what they took. It took a while for Kendrick Lamar to break through yeah. with the type of vibe that he has. That's right. You know, actually, Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, that track was, you know, one of the first ones where people were like, okay. And to me, that DNA album really kind of like pushed him out. Do you have a problem with the fact that he uses the word bitch all the time? I used to joke about Kendrick being huh. the voice of the oppressor because I love Kendrick, but B- Kendrick uses the word bitch all the time. And I wondered, okay, I like Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. Can, can I justify it in my head? Probably, which I maybe shouldn't. But I wondered for you, you're, I mean, you're a woman and you're an artist. Are you yeah. cool with him, with, with men in hip hop using that word all the time? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not cool with anyone using that word all the time. Context is big. I think I'd have to do research to f- truly answer the question, to truly yeah. know. Because I don't know. Uh, I, I, I guess I hadn't necessarily noticed it to the degree that you have. Um, so I would. I, I'm, I'm always cool if, if you want to call somebody. A bitch, like right. you know, if Jessica's a bitch, then right. call her a bitch. But if 
women are bitches. Right. That's and is the, that what we're that's what we're talking that's about? That's what we're talking about. We're yeah. talking about just the use of the word bitch to generally describe women. I, like yeah. I said, you can call anybody whatever you want specifically, because maybe they are. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. I know lots of guys who are dicks. You right. know, so call them a dick. Um, but it's, I just I just wonder if that's a thing. <clears throat> Uh, sorry, this sneeze will not come. You, you can sneeze, that's all right. Well, yeah, no, because I think when I think about humble, yeah, I feel like there's a line in there where he like uses like the word bitch globally to identify women. It's tough. I try, I try to, I try to be very vocal and I know people will have a lot of judgment about me for it. I try not to project my judgment as much on others. I try to focus more on what it is I'm trying to say, uh, to be the opposition to what it is I'm not trying to be. Right. Um, there are some things you can't not talk about. There are some things like you like you gravitate towards and you're like, wow, like this is actual trash. Like I guess Kendrick Lamar, uh, as a strong lyricist who I think is doing some good stuff in hip hop. Oh yeah. Um, and I, I guess outside of the use of, of 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 bitch to describe women, I haven't noticed like overt. Um, yeah, he doesn't act. He doesn't act irresponsibly. Like Kendrick's making, or, speci- or even yeah. like specifically towards women. Yeah, Kendrick's oh. making the world a better place. I think he right. is. Yeah, he, he has this interesting thing where he might use the word bitch, but then he's also like, I like women that are natural. Right. I mean, right. So it's like, so it's like, how do you know? I try not to put you know my foot on the neck of everybody. Like, right. I try to understand. Okay, what are you trying to say, and how are you trying to say it? But where I don't have room, yeah. is when there's no message, and then that's also happening. It's like then your only message literally is. The negativity I can't get behind. Now right. I have to speak on it because it's the only thing you've given me That's to right. speak about. That's right. That's yeah. right. I, I can get behind that. We, when I worked at Much, we there was a there was a basic trope in rock where the videos would have girls dancing in cages. That was a big I part of the that. game, right? Yeah. And we just wouldn't play the videos because we were just like, no, mm-hmm. that's not where we're at. Right. And you actually have to take a stand. Right. I struggle as an enormous fan of hip hop with some of the stuff I want to play in the show. It's like I can fucking play that song. I really want to play that song. Right. So but but it's but it's a true in rock music, it's true in punk music. I played I played artists on the show before that people don't like because of their history. And it's like at the end of the day, separating the artist and the and the and the message or the artist and the lyrics is not always easy. And, it's not always easy. And also I'm not even sure it's whose whose role it is, right? To do that. Yeah, maybe it's just a listener to make their call. I, uh, yeah. I mean, is it though? Like when, before it gets to the listener, like 20, 30, 40 people made it. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's not even the artist, or sometimes it's not even the artist at that point. I will say 13th floor that is coming. It is so much the artist. There's so much of I on this project. Yeah. It's not even funny. I can't wait. I'm so happy with how much involvement I've had in the curation of this I project. can't wait to hear it. Who's, <laughs> is it just you on the record? Who else is on the record? Uh, no, I have a collaboration with uh, Sean Leon. We have uh-huh. a track called Waves. Very cool. Um, me and Claremont the second. We have a track called Smoke. Love Claremont. Yeah. We went to the same high school as my mom. Whoa. Just a little bit later. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> my, mom's, my mom's a little well, older than Claremont. I would think, yeah. But okay, that's sick. Weston I'm going to make sure I, t- yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. make sure I tell him that. Should, hey, he's played here before. Has we, he? Yeah, Claremont played here. Yeah, I, we, Amazing. we're big fans of him. Me too. All right, let's talk about songs. Let's do it. Okay, you want to play, what do you want to play? Rich Spice, is that one of them? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we'll just, let's, what we'll do is we'll talk about him and then I'll spin him in. All right, cool. Okay, so uh, uh, you them, Youth Them Cold. Yes. Talk about that. That, that track, uh, <laughs> I remember listening to that so many times uh, in the car with my mom and my dad while driving like from uh, to Brampton when I was moving to Brampton yeah. uh, from Toronto. And I just remember resonating with, first of all, the chord progression is, you know, very me. It's, it's very dark, but also very pretty. It kind of like evokes an emotion just on an instrumental level, just on a sonic level. Um, and then lyrically, it's just, you know, speaking of kind of like the, the kind of like this distance that we're noticing with young people and like their inability to connect with like genuinity these days. Um, and just kind of like literally like as the title states, like Mm -hmm. becoming so cold and, and being separate from like any sort of, you know, you know, connective emotion, like people connective emotion, just kind of like doing and you, you know, just how, how best do I explain it? It's just for me, like sitting in the back seat with my mom and my dad. And how old were you then? young like i can't remember my exact age probably the young teens like 12 or did, something did you give them a blunt to loosen no, no. <laughs> that was, okay. that right, was we'll, good right, we'll play that song um another song that uh, you you gave us a few songs um new song the christmas shoes oh that's honestly that's my i remember my mom introducing me to that song she said it's one of her favorite christmas songs and then i listened to it and it's about a little boy who goes to a store and needs money to buy his mom's shoes and she has cancer and it's just 
the first time I heard the song, we were in a store. Me and my mom were in a store, and like she teared up, and like my mom is my rock. My mom and my dad, but my mom is my rock. So, when so you see her cry. It, for, I just can't unsee it. So when I hear the song, and also just like family is everything, and so the length that the boy went to do that for his mom, who he knew he was eventually going to lose for me, I'm just an extremely empathetic person, and I just like I put myself in the shoes of. There's somebody that's lived that. There's so many people that live that. And I'm grateful that thus far I have not. And it just, you know, breaks my heart that some of us, we, you know, we don't, we won't always have, some don't even ha still have, you know, that, that rock that when I go home, I'm just like, hey, I, I need you all the time. Hi. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I bet you she loves that too. Yeah. Uh, 50. Which one is that? You have a Don't Push Me um, oh. <laughs> and, and Life's on the Line. Uh, honestly, Get Rich or Die Trying, that whole album by 50 Cent is like me, like grade six. Like that's when I started rapping. That's when I was like allowed to like, I, that's when I started to finesse and I started finding music on my own using a computer. Before that, I actually wasn't really allowed to like listen to rap. I was listening to Eminem the other day, talk to, talk to Sway, and he was talking about when 50 came out. Yeah. And he said that nobody has ever, in hip hop, nobody has ever had the start that 50 had. He said M didn't blow up like that, his first record. You know, he said, maybe Snoop. He said, maybe Snoop had it. He said, but when that 50 Cent record came out, it was bigger than anything that's ever happened. His ascension and the impact on people was enormous, right? It was, I knew that whole album word for word. I, it's probably the first album I knew word for word. I loved all the production. I, I was always a big fan of M. Yeah. So, you know, there's some production elements. Like he, I think he produced some stuff on that record too. Yeah. So there was some stuff that was familiar to my ear, but it was just interesting that I was able to connect so well with a record about, by a guy who got shot nine times. Like I don't resonate <laughs> with that at all, but his storytelling ability and just the way, like it's a very cohesive well-made project it, and it's i like that i kind of got into aspiring to rap through that process it's amazing uh yeah because i saw it more as i saw it as you know telling your story telling your truth telling your reality and then telling it in like an, an artful medium that was clearly thought of i just i like to build stuff i like to build stuff but not like carpenter build like i'm not good at that yeah i don't know what way the screw goes in i don't use drills but i like to build stuff righty, righty tighty lefty lucy it's easy I, I keep trying to remember it's not really panning out too well for me, but what right. I do remember is where the kick and the snare sit. So, right. that's, but that's it. Right? Those, are, that's, those are the things I build, and you know, I love that I get to be involved in the curation of the sound, the words, the idea, the artwork, everything. And so it allows me to build in, 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 in a way where I otherwise could not. Right. Yeah. That's great. Um, TLC, no scrubs. Oh, what a oh song. my God. Yeah, just touching my heart right now. Um, I, uh, I actually grew up singing with three of my sisters and we were the mighty family. And, uh, so we grew up singing TLC and singing to girl groups and, yeah. uh, it was just beautiful to see. They just had like a vibe. They had like great melodies, great R and B crew. And then they had like the tomboy swag, but they also had the very feminine swag and they just, you know, you looked at TLC and you saw you, I mean, for me yeah. as a black female, yeah, I yeah. looked at TLC <laughs> on TV, not, maybe not for you, but <laughs> I looked at TLC on TV and I went, these songs were great. There you go. Because we were playing those videos on Much, and I loved them. There You're you like, go. This is, this is really good they shit, were, man. I wish they made, I know they spoke about how much they made or didn't make. I wish they made more for, for what they did because yeah. they, they left a mark. And Brass Monk? Oh, oh. I don't even, I don't even know their catalog, yeah. but that song, it was cool looking back and like when I used to watch that song, like every time it came on Much Music, it was one of the first songs I taped like yeah. over one of my mom's tapes. She was mad, but <laughs> that track is is amazing and like- Looking back and seeing that they were from Scarborough and, you know, it's just a, 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 a crew of dudes rapping and it's just, for me, it's like really cool full circle because I had no idea they, like, I didn't, I don't know that I knew they were from here. I don't know that I made the connection. I was just like, this song is lit and I would just listen to it and rap along with it. So you started singing at five roughly and 11 is when you started rapping? Yeah, what, singing rap lessons from four to 11 and then I started rapping at 12. What, 12. Uh, yeah. do, do you remember the first rhyme you wrote? The actual rhyme itself, yeah. no. The words? No, no. 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 But it was over uh, Nelly, Nelly yeah. his beat grills. Okay, I like that. Yeah. It was cool to get a grill 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like three in there. Uh, <laughs> I got three. I just lost my gold tooth, though. That's, a, that's, a, that's my fault. Um, okay, so a McDonald's paycheck really paid off for you, didn't it? Yeah. How, did I tell you that before? No. Oh. But that's, that's what, how you bought your stuff? Yeah, he can remind people. No, He's reading no, minds, people. Re research, just research. Okay, okay. Colton, Colton okay. found that. Okay. Um, yes, McDonald's was the start. Which McDonald's? 
<laughs> it was a the one at Brinkley and Brampton. Shout okay. out to you. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they don't deserve the shout out. <laughs> they don't deserve. We the used to shout go to out. the one on Highway Seven. They fired me. Did they? Why? <laughs> Why'd they fire you? They fired me because. Okay, so I have I have a lot of dietary restrictions. Uh-huh. And I'm a vegetarian. I, I, I used to be able to eat gluten back then, and I got a fry, but I wanted to make a fry, fry poutine, and we had a 15-minute break. 15, yeah. like one five. So before I signed out, I dropped fries. Yeah. I dropped it for any customer who came in, and I knew that I was going to make myself a fry out of that fry that I dropped out of the vat. Right. And then I remember like I had my coworker make... Make I was like, can you add fries and onions and and cheese and can you add tomatoes and like just make it a fry supreme like let me because yeah. I can't you know I can't eat any burgers here like I don't really get to have a real meal right and I have to eat on my lunch so like let's make it a thing and I remember we had this new manager who just came in I'm gonna shout him out too his name is Alfonso what up Alfonso <laughs> what up Alfonso uh, the best manager was Carrie she hired me she was wicked and then she transferred out and then Alfonso came in. <laughs> And he wrote me up for all this dumb stuff, but this third time he wrote me up because I asked my coworker to put cheese yeah. on the poutine. What's the crime there? Because I hadn't yet charged myself for the cheese. Oh, he thought you were stealing it? But I it? also hadn't yet charged myself for the meal. Okay. So he made the assumption that I wasn't going to charge myself for any of the, so like the extra tomatoes, the extra cheese. And then he, I was 15. So when he brought out the, you got to sign this piece of paper for what you've done. I just signed the shit. I didn't know. Yeah. Fired. It was your termination. Fired. Well, <laughs> once you get three of those, right. you're, yeah. And it took me, yeah. Alfonso. But you know what I will say? Forget Alfonso, but McDonald's, I made enough money. <laughs> I made enough money to get my first laptop, yep. which which is where I recorded my first verse that I no longer have. And yep. <laughs> where I recorded my first project and all of that. And so, you know, and even just like kind of like the understanding of work ethic. Right. You know, ever since that, the only break I've had from working was the year that I got fired in there. After that, <laughs> I've been always constantly working and putting all of the resources back into this. So, I mean, from the very beginning, all the money I've made has just gone back into hopefully having a studio as cool as yours, to be honest. You can play here. You can record here anytime you want. Sick. Anytime. We got some good stuff. I'm going to play a beat for you. You're going you're gonna to rap for us? Sure, all right, yeah. We got the champion instrumental. Dope. Let's do it. All right. Let's play this. Hold on. And. Hey. Look. Yeah. Yeah, you wanna get that? I'm too busy with this Kit Kat. Yeah, I'm comfy, I admit that. Either love me or you get back. Is a bunny on a dispatch? You better hop quick off my motherfucking hot shit. Tinder every picks a top pick. Nigga, every bitch is toxic. Shorty, every dick's a modic. Maybe the logic lately been way off. Shit is way off. You ain't got a job, you was laid off. You fell asleep, never paid back. You want it all for the payoff. Well, I'm way up, shit, I'm way up. I never ever take a day off. These people around me wanna say something. Like you better never make the playoffs. I'm a champion all day, born this way. What about you? I'm a champion all day born this way, what about you? I'm a champion all day born this way, what about you? I'm a champion all day born this way no back brace, yeah, I stand straight. Press isn't never backspace. The attendant always filling up my gas gauge. I'm away, you just a wigger in a black face. Pretty sure I saw your picture on the back page. Pretty sure I'm just a tit you on a lactate. Your wrist can never live up to the handshake. Gandhi with like a stiff inside an ashtray. You probably wanna fit me like a pancake. Ooh, poppy, can you give me a little champagne? Too sloppy when I kiss you is a mandate. Ooh, long skinny figures as I translate. Easy to rock with me or fuck you. Unless you win the lottery, then come through. I mean, need a glossary to trust you. It's gonna take a lot to beat my comp. Whoa, way off, shit is way off. You ain't got a job, you was laid off. You fell asleep on a night shift You want it all for the payoff Well, I'm way up, I'm way up I never ever take a day off These people around me wanna say something like you Hey, hey, hey. I'm a champion all day born this way What about you? I'm a champion all day born this way What about you? I'm a champion all day born this way Born this way Born this way Hey, hey, hey I think that's all I got for you <laughs> what? <laughs> that's all I got for that's you. That's great. Right that's now. great. <laughs> no, we appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. What a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.